Have you ever wondered what the opening of the abyss might look like in a world that feels so chaotic? Revelation chapter 9 offers a vivid and unsettling glimpse into this moment. Let us read Revelation chapter 9 from verse 1. And the fifth angel sounded, and I saw a star fall from heaven unto the earth. And to him was given the key to the bottomless pit. The person who is saying I is John who wrote Revelation. And he, now the fifth angel, opened the bottomless pit, and there arose a smoke out of the pit, as the smoke of a great furnace. And the sun and the air were darkened by the reason of the smoke of the pit. And there came out of the smoke locusts upon the earth, and unto them was given power, as the scorpions of the earth have power. And it was commanded them that they should not hurt the grass of the earth, neither any green thing, neither any tree, but only those men who have not the seal of God in their foreheads. And to them, now the locusts, it was given that they should not kill them, but that they should be tormented for five months. And their torment was as the torment of a scorpion when it strikes a man. So the locusts were allowed to torment even the people who had the seal of God, but they were not allowed to kill them. And in those days shall men seek death and shall not find it, and shall desire to die, and death shall flee from them. And the shapes of the locusts were like unto horses, prepared unto battle. And on their head were as it were crowns like gold, and their faces were as the faces of men. And they had hair as the hair of women, and their teeth were as the teeth of lions. And they had breastplates as it were breastplates of iron, and the sound of their wings was as the sound of chariots of many horses running to a battle. And they had tails like unto scorpion, and there were stings in their tails, and their power was to hurt men for five months. And they had a king over them, who is the angel of the bottomless pit, whose name in the Hebrew tongue is Abaddon, but in the Greek tongue has the name Apollyon. One war is past, and behold, there comes two more wars after this. Verses 13 And the sixth angel sounded, and I heard a voice from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel, who had the trumpet, Lose the four angels who are bound in the great river Euphrates. And the four angels were loosed, who were prepared for an hour, and a day, and a month, and a year, to slay a third part of men. Verse 16 And the number of the army of the horsemen were two hundred thousand thousand, and I heard the number of them. And thus I saw the horses in the vision, and them that sat on them, having breastplates of fire, and of jacinth and brimstone, and the heads of the horses were as the head of lions, and out of their mouth issued fire at the smoke of the brimstone. By these three was the third part of the men killed, by the fire, and by the smoke, and by the brimstone which issued out of their mouth. For their power, not these men in the horses, was in their mouth and in their tails, for their tails were like unto serpents with heads. And with them they do hurt. And the rest of the men who were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of the works of their hands, that they should not worship demons and idols of gold, silver and bronze and stone and of wood, which neither can see nor hear nor walk. Neither repented they of their murders, nor their sorceries, nor their fornication, nor of their thefts. That's the end of Revelation chapter 9. It ends verses 21. So now what do we learn from Revelation chapter 9? The truth is, I myself am still trying to figure out the symbolism so that I don't understand so much of the imagery here. 
I do believe in reading the Bible word for word and I, uh, what I get from here is that something will happen in the spiritual realm that will affect men in this physical realm. That's how I get it. For five months, they will be tormented by these locusts that have the, the pain as though you've been bitten by a scorp. Angels which, which are standing on top of river Euphrates when they will be released somehow in the army of men, they're going to come together and the number of them will be 200,000, thousand. That's like 200 million armies of men but instead of bringing security in the earth they will bring destruction using the forces that they have they will destroy men with the power that they hold i feel like this revelation as this was happening every destruction that was happening in the earth was supposed to lead people back into repentance however the verse the chapter ends by saying even though all these things are happening People still chose not to repent, saying verses 20. And the rest of the men who were not killed by these plagues, yet repented not of their works of their hands, that they should not worship demons, so, nor idols of gold, silver, or bronze, and stone, and wood, which neither can see here nor walk. So they still followed after their last in their heart in worshipping idols. And you may think, now you may think, who would worship a wooden god? Who would worship a... All these types of idols, very few people worship it, but I feel like we all tend to worship those things unknowingly. Like um, an idol of wood, an idol of stone could be your house where you would do anything to earn it. Like you could sell your soul to have a perfect house, to live in these big, big mansions, you know? Idols of stone, those are like houses. Where you sell your soul, these people still continue to sell their soul for the sake of these earthly pleasures. And even me, sometimes you find yourself, worship is like, you will do whatever it takes, even losing your soul, just to obtain these things that you worship, that you think are of importance to you. So people at that time will still continue focusing on things which are worldly which are after the flesh, to satisfy your pride and your lust. Even right now, I feel like you should be careful not to worship idols of metal, for example, cars, idols of stones, for example, houses, wood, for example. You know, you, you'll go, you know, sell yourself just to buy a new furniture. May God forgive us. And again, it also says, Neither do they repent not of their murders. You know, you may think, I feel like it represents literal murdering. Where in like nowadays, for example, abortion, which is murder, is made legal. So murdering will be normal in those days. They still won't stop it. Another form of murder is hatred. You remember Jesus said, if you hate your brother, you have committed murder. So there will be again so much hatred. Hatred is still a part of murder. So anytime you hate someone so deeply, understand you're committing murder. So I think people will still commit the physical murder and so much hatred again in those times. And again, it says, nor of their sorceries. Yeah, in Revelation chapter 9, the sorcery that's being talked about is, if you read in Hebrew, the word sorcery, used in Revelation chapter 9 verses 21, actually in Greek is called pharmakia, where we get the word pharmaceutical, which means dragging. You know, ancient sorcerers commonly used drugs to induce vision and healing. According to the ancient, in the ancient time, they used drugs. These drugs are still being used today. Drugs are very common. They've become widely accepted. For the Bible to say they still repent and not of it, I feel like it's an advice for us to try and repent from it right now. That by the grace of God, for those who have the ability to stop using drugs, that we should stop. For those who don't have the ability, may the Holy Spirit help us to fight and to be able to overcome this season. And I feel like it's a very sad ending of Revelation chapter 9 because one would think. When you see this sign of the end time, the right thing to do would be to repent and stop. But it it seems like the, it won't happen. So that's the end of Revelation chapter 9. We have discovered the two words and we are yet to figure out what the last two is. 
I hope you have learned something even though I didn't expound it deeply. I pray that the blessing which you have promised in Revelation chapter 1 that says when we read the book of Revelation that there's a blessing attached to it. You know, may find you where you are. I pray that us and our loved ones will escape this terror in Jesus' name. That we won't be around in those days. I pray for the people who will be around in those days. That may Jesus Christ finish to work at the cross. Soften their heart that they may turn back to him. Because there's nothing impossible with him. We ask God to forgive us. We repent of our sins, of our trespasses, of our iniquities. In Jesus' name. And as you go through your day, whatever these people were warned to try and repent from, any time you find yourself doing it, instead of staying in condemnation, just tell God, I'm sorry, forgive me, and God will forgive us. Thank you for your time. I hope to see you. I hope to I hope you will join me in the reading of Revelation chapter 10 in our next episode. Thank you so much for your time. May God bless you and keep you in Jesus' name. Amen.